Are we live now? <laughs> I guess. Okay. So what should we talk about? We're supposed to touch should on- Should we like meet each other maybe for a sec? I think that- um, I'm Emmy, nice to meet you, you know. <laughs> right on, nice um, to meet you. And I mean, I, I guess I think what you started talking about was a good start. I have some points to go off that so you can carry like carry on your thoughts and I'll cut you off at one point. Should I just say what I said before then? Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, so what I was saying prior to uh, this all setting off is I think the importance of a of, of photography or film, you know, or, or moving moving images and, and anything visual um, is probably the most important um, aspect of, of any branding in, in these, you know, in this moment when everybody basically lives via social media, um, where, you know, I mean, there's so many brands in the world, there's so much shit, there's so much, um, so much stuff that, that arguably we don't need. So if you have a brand that you feel like is doing something different, that's fantastic. But the end user, when view, I think that the majority of the way that people view things is via social media or print publications and, and online, um, publications, blogs, etc. cetera. Um, if you don't have a strong visual story to tell, um, through strong imagery, whether the photography is actually good or whether just the concept behind the photography is good, both of those are equally valid, um, then you're able to set yourself apart from other brands potentially making the same shit as you or something. I think, yeah. I think what you said what was, before, what was interesting was that the imagery you build around the company is maybe, and I think definitely more important than the product itself. Yeah, like, I, I think that really works in our time because there's such a surplus, but also because since a while, it really has been that um, that we've been selling like the idea and right. uh, the ambiance, like the vibe, whatever. Like, we're no longer really selling products, you know, because there are just too many companies competing for the same thing. And I think in the 90s with photography, there was a huge shift in that where people started selling like the lifestyle. And it's funny how some people still don't get it. Like I find that, I don't know if you ever run into this, but because I mean, your work is quite specific. So I don't know exactly how you interact with clients, but I run into this a lot where brands really want images to be really focused on products. And I think that's like a huge mistake. Yeah. It's so boring. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because no. there's just so much more, like there's so much more to tell. And I think now people also want a personal connection. So they want an image or like the, their imagery to tell a story, like to tell about the brand, to tell about how it's fitted to you. Like, why should you buy them instead of someone else? Why is it unique? And you can do all that through the content you're producing instead of just like showing off that, oh, look, we have another phone. It's like, there's so right. many. Right. But I mean, I mean, if you treat your product, like imagine your product is like a celebrity. It's like celebrities are only as valuable as like, now at least and and since tabloids were invented like we only really care about celebrities due to the due to the uh their real life story or whatever t chooses to be captured by the paparazzi and what have you so like the person <laughs> itself which in this case we can relate to the product that you're trying to sell is only desirable because they're either relatable in whether it's through their faults or through their through their strengths or whatever it is, or just how normal they are, um, you know? And like, we don't, like, it doesn't matter if they're the most beautiful person in the entire world or the most uh, fit person or the best actor or the best singer or whatever. It only has to do with the fact that there's a story behind it. And like, you know, I mean, when a, when a celebrity becomes a philanthropist, for example, arguably they become much more, uh, uh, interesting because now there's a story where it's like Angelina Jolie has adopted all of these children and like, you know, and it's fantastic. And, and she's, you know, helping people all the time. And like, I'm just using her as, as an example, but, um, 
but and in the same vein her father john void is a horrible person due to being a major um right-wing conspiracy theorist and what have you but although he's a fantastic actor nobody cares about that because of the story behind him so the images become the story behind the celebrity and the celebrity is just the end product that the user consumes via their music or their or their um movies or, or what have you so without strong imagery you can make the greatest uh, items in the world you can make the most innovative uh forward thinking beautiful whatever it is intricate products in the world but nobody gives a shit because if they can't relate to it and see it in a way that they can identify it either as something relatable in their life or as something so fantastic that they probably won't ever truly be able to achieve that lifestyle but they they might want to aspire to that lifestyle i think that that is the the um the strongest thing along with having strong imagery being able to thusly validate your brand by a, like let's say you're a student designer and you work with um Stephen klein or something like that it, instantly you know your your work is validated by by working with a with a photographer who is able to kind of capture and you have to be a pretty rich student designer, though, to be able to work with Stephen Klein. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they exist. They definitely do exist. Um, I think also imagery gives you a chance to build the world around your product, because I think that's really important because different, like, you know, the same product can be viewed in different ways and to make someone convince like this one is for you. It really depends on the vision of the company. And I, I don't know, I think like, companies like Glossier or something like this literally like build their whole company on the fact that they had a very like specific, very strong marketing strategy and right. the way that they made their imagery made it super relatable, like really for everyone about this natural thing, blah, blah, blah. It was super simple, the concept, but it worked like really, really well because they only have like few products, which are like always sold out and the business is growing really fast. And I think there are a lot of um, like examples of these kinds of, small brands like making like a really quick start like comparing to you know like huge huge companies where they're taking things like more slowly and i don't know i don't know i think it's also interesting like or valid to take risks with imagery these days because i think there's so much that you want to stand out and obviously when i say risks i think any risk should be validated like you have to have a thought behind it you have to think it through and everything but I, my problem a lot of the time with clients is also that everyone is trying to target everyone. Mm -hmm. And there's like a great um, quote by Lizette Model, like this really great photographer from 20th century. Like the more specific you are, the more general it will be. Like the more specific you are with who you're trying to reach, the more the person will feel the connection and the more people will understand like the depth of the connection. So I think that's a mistake young brands make a lot when they try to just like, include everyone not meaning like obviously i i think i never unique or, or whatever whereas like if you if you gear it towards um towards a more focused demographic yeah like you have to know your audience like you have to know your focus group and also like you're not going to be the second h&m you know just because it's different time now that's not right. how like they made their head start because like them and zara whoever like those companies they made their head start because they did it at the right time like right. now not it's not the time for that because they already took the market like I think now the brands that do well are the ones that make a very specific, like choose a very specific direction, have a very specific target audience and like really stay true to themselves. I think that's also important. Like the idea of always like having a point of view and sticking to it. Like, right. I mean, I don't know. For me, when I buy clothes, like even to step out of this, but to go to a... Um, like the consumer side, because I think about this a lot. Like whenever clients ask me to like show the product, I always think like, have I ever really like bought something because I saw the product? Like, no, <laughs> like, but I bought stuff from like 
because this campaign was so genius that I was like, wow, this designer is really cool because to think of that was super smart. For sure. I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's two ways to think about it where like, if you think about it from like the social media base, like arguably, don't you think arguably like with the social media base and like the Instagram viewer, the vast majority of people would probably engage with the most basic kind of imagery as, as anything a little bit too cerebral or too conceptual may fall on lost um, deaf ears. Whereas like if you're doing editorial or a campaign or whatever, that's not primarily geared towards social media, but may be seen on billboards and, and blah, 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 where, you know, I mean, I just, I just constantly am fighting with the fact that like, whenever I post what I feel to be talking about Instagram, for example, when I post an image, which I view as like one of my strongest images, which let's say, for example, it's the perfect composition or the perfect light or the perfect, you know, gesture, what, what have you. And then you post it and the comments that show up underneath that are like, Oh my God, cute shoes. Where can I buy them? And I'm just like, die. Like, <laughs> Like, that's not what any of this is about. So like, don't you think that if you took, you know, in, in a lot of the situations, besides things going viral and like Kim Kardashian validating something by posting it or what have you, don't you think that like an image that's too conceptual or too abstract might fall on blind eyes? I don't know. It's complicated. I think it really depends on your, like, your goals and what are you trying to do? And, you know, if you're goal is really to be commercially successful and that's like the end and you're trying to make like the most valid strategy on that that's one thing versus if your goal is to make a product that is commercially successful but maybe like not the most commercially successful but also makes you feel good about yourself i don't know that's yeah. different and yeah. but i totally understand what you're saying like when you post some things like a work that you really love and then you're like okay, this is, this is not the reaction that I expected. I totally get that. But yeah. for me, it goes both ways, to be honest. Like, but I think this is just like this thing that artists have a lot. Like for me, if I post something that then gets really good feedback, I'm like, well, this was actually something really important and smart and too many people thought it was just cute. Like, this is wrong. And then I'll post something that is really smart also in my head. And then it doesn't get much of a reaction. And then I'm like, no one really got that. Maybe it's not that smart. So right. I think that's just like an artist complex. Right. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a conundrum, like for sure. Like, I mean, in this day and age, like obviously, but okay, sorry, going back to what you were saying before, like, especially with like, let's, let's, since we're supposed to be talking about new designers or young designers or local designers, I think that the number one thing that needs to be thought of, and it's very difficult, especially when you start off without like a good financial base or without a good following, for example, I think the number one thing is what you were saying before, and this relates to it is maintaining integrity, which is kind of lost in, in this day and age in a, in a little bit. Like it's so easy for people to just throw away integrity in order to see a financial return. And I think that people need to, I think that the most important thing and the, the thing that matters the most with integrity is not thinking about what's gonna go into your pocket today like let's say yeah it's like 30 years so like if you sell like a million of the hottest shit right now that nobody needs like in 30 years are you still going to have a business or can you have a little bit of cachet and integrity and like i mean brands like louis vuitton and christian dior and whatever didn't just like start and like just be like commercial entities they were like all right we're gonna make this and it's gonna take some lady sitting in a room under a light uh, like seven days to make this one small thing and that's our brand and they're like yeah we could have it done in bangladesh for a fraction of the price and yeah they'll probably still look the same but there's not going to be the story there and a hundred years later are we still going to have a business model whereas like still when there's a dior haute couture show or a chanel haute couture show and they have like Le Sage doing all the embroidery and that dress is going to be like four hundred thousand dollars and one woman is going to buy it maybe if they're lucky they still maintain the integrity of the brand by 
utilizing the best of the best in order to maintain their cachet and in order to create something that may not be the most financially viable product uh, for the masses, definitely not, but like there can be something that adds to their story. And let's say nobody buys that Lesage embroidered dress, but as a marketing tool, as something that shows how in love with the, the craft um, Chanel or whatever is, you know what I mean? Like- I think that's also important. I don't know, I think about this a lot personally, the idea that like when you go into an artistic business, like whatever it is, you know, like when your job is something creative, yeah. it's always a risk kind of, and you're always taking that risk because it's not the most stable industries, you know? And for me, whenever I catch myself like making some decisions that, you know, like where I'm putting money first or whatever, I'm always like, you took this risk, so you might as well like carry this risk on and actually use it for what it is, you know, like give it your all instead of then sabotaging this integrity like that you're talking about. And to be honest, for me, I don't I like I've thought about this a lot again, like none of the projects that I've done where I went and compromised with myself really gave me that much feed like um, like feedback, I guess, like in the long run. And then the ones where I really like was maybe a pain to work with, but like stated that no we talked about this we're gonna to have to stick to this plan like this was important this is important this detail is important we have to do it exactly like this and the clients or the magazines whatever were supportive of it then those were the projects that went like viral or like whatever you know that gave a lot of feedback so in the end i think if you're taking like if you're being honest, it does pay off. Maybe just not instantly, or maybe not quite as easily as you would like. But in the long run, it's much more important. Yeah. Definitely. And I find the same actually with like little brands. Like, I don't know how, but even from Instagram, for me, it's funny. Like, I notice sometimes certain things and I save them. And then, and it's nobody, you know, like I have a lot of friends who I follow who are like design, um, design students, like at St. Martin's or something, who are like, second years or something like really young and then you notice something when and I, i'm not really paying that much attention but i just remember saving this thing and then three years later you see them doing like super well so i think when people stick to who they are it, it does work right yeah you have to you have to be very like stubborn but also very um i don't know what the word is i want to use but you have to you have to like talking about like your photos you have to hold your guns and like not really budge and or yeah it's all about integrity really in the long run and yeah also like don't compromise with yourself i think that's important obviously you have to compromise sometimes for like costs or whatever like there are logistics but there are certain things which you feel like it's a compromise with yourself not with you know like the team or whatever because that's also important like a lot of the time or all almost always it's teamwork so there are other people and their opinions are valid and you have to remember that but if you know that you're really not doing something that feels right like you probably shouldn't be doing it yeah and and another thing that i always like to kind of reference going back to like the you know the big fashion houses and, and integrity again it's like I, I remember back in the day um, when I first started, you know, doing what I do professionally and like I was able to, my rates were quite high and then some kids came along and they started doing very similar to what I do, maybe not at the same quality level, but that doesn't matter um, for let's say 10% of what I was charging at the time. And I was like talking to my girlfriend at the time and she was like, and I was like, should I, should I bring my rates down? Should I, should I be cheaper in order to get more work? And her, her response was like, no, you never want to be the price guy. And I was like, well, what does that mean? Like, it, what, what if I don't sell, you know, what if I don't get hired because I'm too expensive? And then you kind of think about like when Louis Vuitton or, or Dior or Chanel or any of these people came out, like they didn't start selling suitcases for like, the same price as everybody else. They were like, no, this suitcase is 3000 euros more than the other person's suitcase. And be, you know, they didn't, they didn't slowly like increase their prices. It's like when Karl Lagerfeld in, increased the price of the, of the timeless classic, like Chanel bag, he was like, this is how much this costs. If you want to have this bag, it costs this much. And like, that is what it takes to carry this bag. And that's a bold move to like, but it's one of those things to where it like that also validates. I'm not saying that things should, I don't think a Chanel bag should cost $6,000, but 
but you understand what I'm trying to say. It's like, yeah. if a Chanel bag was $250, nobody would want a Chanel bag because everyone would have a Chanel bag and it would be passe. Like, I think this also relates a lot to, I mean, I think this would work with brands too, but I say this a lot because I teach at a university, uh, at like a photography school in Moscow sometimes. And I say this a lot to my students, like not to start working until they feel like their work is really worth paying for and they feel happy and they feel like they can charge well for it because if you build yourself a name being someone cheap it's really difficult to then like charge 10 times more you know like it's kind of stupid like why would the client pay 10 times more so it's much better to like bring your work to a certain level where it's actually good where it's actually worth this price you know you're worth this price and you can like sell it to people and then they know what they're paying for. Then you start off as like something half good, half done, like whatever. I think in, in fashion, there's a lot of that too, because a lot of the time, like production, especially for small brands is it's difficult, you know, like you have to go through a lot of stages. So like, don't start. So you get a reputation of someone who is bad, like someone who's like products fall apart because this happens a lot. Like I hear this a lot from friends because it's actually like, we don't, we don't think about it that much when we're on the other side, but to even make like the smallest thing to make all the seams and find all the like diff right printers, materials, blah, blah, blah. It's so much work. Like right. don't launch too early basically. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the unfortunate thing with the pace that fashion works at now is like, for there's, sure. there's so much pressure to just constantly have new, stimulus stimuli to, you know to to keep people engaged because now it's all about relevance so that's another thing going back to like the importance of of um of a visual uh facade or whatever to to your business it's like you don't need to post you don't need to have new content every day or every week like it's better to release like one mind-blowing uh you know campaign or whatever on a much more reasonable schedule where it's every six months or even annually or whatever something that's lasting and something that will like there's photos it's, it's rare anymore but we still go back to photos from the 80s and 90s and 70s and 60s that are going to be photos that people 200 years from now still look at can we say the same thing about campaigns and editorials that are being created right now? Like obviously the art form is moving forward with better technology and, and different lighting techniques and, and different ways of thinking and, and with, with post-production, but like just creating for the sake of creating is in my opinion, kind of. I think also something that happens a lot is for me, at least with small brands they come to you and they want to cover all grounds in one shoot they want like images that are campaign images and lookbook images and something they can also maybe use for just like content on social media all in one shoot because they're trying to save costs right. so in the end you get like a shoot that's quite big it was a pretty big production but the images aren't like clear enough to be lookbook they're not strong enough to be like crazy good campaign images and you end up just with like a lot of fillers. Yeah. So it's always better to like split your money wisely. Like, yes, you're going to have to spend more, but you can split it. Like you don't have to release really stuff all the time, as you said. And it's better if you shoot like a clear lookbook that really shows the product. And then you only shoot like, I don't know, three campaign images, but they're like actually amazing because it's, it's really difficult if you have 60 looks to make them all like incredibly amazing and interesting and also show all the details of the clothes, you know, like it's actually impossible. Yeah. But I mean, it, the, it's the, it's the perfect allegory for that is to, or analogy, sorry for that is to, it, you know, if you go to the grocery store, they're going to have fine meat and fine cheese and fine produce. But if you go to the butcher, they're going to have the best meat. You go to the, to the cheese shop, they're going to have the best cheese. You go to the fish place, they're going to have the best. You know what I mean? Like it's this new world mindset of the supermarket where you can, people think that they can just make one stop and, and get everything that they need. And, and you end yeah. up, you end up uh, diminishing your product in the end. Like, ah, I mean, as much as I would love to shoot the campaign lookbook and, and content, it, you know, get paid for all of that. Like it, from the brand perspective, I think it makes more sense to diversify a little bit and have, your lookbook should, should be different than your campaign. Obviously. For sure. 
and and then sure. your content your intern can shoot that you know what i mean like like in, and in i election. realized honestly how important because i like in the beginning i was kind of supportive of that i was like okay let's try like let's let's yeah. make this try to make this work and then sometimes like i would see how it wasn't you know sometimes it would work sometimes i would know it could be better and then once i was with the stylist friend and she was selecting looks and i realized actually that for a lookbook, it is really good when it's just very simple and very clear and you don't need this crazy artistic vision, whatever. So, because actually it's distracting, you know, because lookbook is there for you to see the looks and then you can shoot the campaign that's small and strong and focused. And there you can put like all your creative things into. So you have to split. Yeah. And also if you sit there shooting 60 looks front side and back like e-commerce and then they say, okay, let's go do something creative right now. You're going to be burnt out anyway. So like, for sure. For yeah. sure. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it just depends where you, what you want to focus on. But again, I, I think, I think going back to what we started with, I, I think that just focusing on the story of what you're trying to sell, like forget that you're selling clothes, like, yes, that is what people are going to end up giving you money for in exchange for your product, but you need to realize that that's not going to last and that you need to focus on leaving a lasting impression so that in a hundred years or 10 years or whatever it is, people still remember your brand's name. Like, um, and that's, um, I think that's difficult to think that far down the road, especially when you're just starting out. But I think that it's the most important thing. It's it's the same, it's the same thing with life in general. Like we, you know, the younger you are, the harder it is for you to think about the future. And then the older you get, you realize like how finite life is and how much more life you might have left. And and you start to kind of like plan a little bit better. But when you're 17 or 20 years old or whatever, like arguably you don't quite understand what five years down the road really might look like. So I think being constantly conscious of a, of a timeline being organized and like, just always like projecting your brand, like five years into the future. And like knowing that if you invest, it's like with any business, if you invest now into the infrastructure, which would be in this situation in the creative infrastructure to, uh build a strong story today like right when you start out versus doing it in 10 years and then everyone's like oh this brand has just had a transformation it's like as much as value as much value as that might have down the road like how much cooler would it be to just always have been the shit and like to have always i also feel like to be honest it's rare you know unless you have someone like really backing you up that a transformation really works Low like, with yep. this kind of business i always especially if we talk about like one specific market, be like at the local market or a global market at each one of them, you get kind of one shot, to be honest. I feel like if you screw up your one shot, it's very difficult to rebrand. Like you have to invest same amount of money to rebranding. Like you might like as well just start a new company. <laughs> like a celebrity. Like if you get caught yeah, 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 for overdosing sure. or whatever, you're, you're done. So um, yeah, I think that re being really focused and, and, and maybe you have to spend a little bit more money or maybe you have to spend a little bit more time and push your collection back six months to the next season, just to make sure that it's, that it's finely tuned and, and whatever. Then for sure. I think that's actually a really good point too. Like, um, I was I was listening to a podcast with the creator of Orson and Iris, uh, this this brand that like became really big on Insta through Instagram basically and through like managing the visual content well. And it started off as like a couple of products where she made like a top and then another top and then like a, one more thing. And she released them like as she was ready because when you're not a big house with reputation who needs to do this like fashion shows every right. season blah 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 actually you can work in your own schedule and you can make up your own schedule and make sure you're producing content you're actually happy with and product that's actually good instead of like just trying to run this race right which actually is like not going to lead you anywhere if you're not ready right no i mean and and we're, we're almost done here we only have a couple minutes left but i think that the perfect way to look at it is like one of the most like baller moves that I have seen exist is Raf Simmons stepping down from Dior because he was no longer able to create to the level that he wanted to create. And that man was sure. arguably making more money at Dior than he would have ever done with his own brand and to step back and say like, no, look, I'm creative. This is what I want to do. This job is 
meaning is making me less creative because I don't have time to indulge in new experiences, which is how I get my creativity. He stepped down. And for me, that's like the most impressive thing ever, you know, like, for sure. he did on his, I don't know if he was pushed out, who knows what the actual story is, but like that I'm, I, I respect that move so much because like that guy could have stayed at Dior maybe forever, you know, and like, and, and been remembered for that. But like he left because it wasn't the right match. And for me that like, I lo always loved Raph Simmons, but for me, that was like the coolest thing in the whole world because he stayed true to what was important to him. And in the end of the day, when he's on his deathbed, he will know that he made the right choice. And that's the thing that you have to think about is when you get to the end of your life, you look back and you want to make sure that you left something behind that matters, whether it's to you or to other people, doesn't matter, but like, it just feel like you did something that like left a little mark, right? Instead of just creating yeah. shit. Sorry about all my language, by the way. <laughs> Anyway, are I we... think that's a pretty good story to end on, honestly. Like this, this idea of like looking back on your life and sure. being like, "Is this what I want people to think of me?" So I think that's a pretty good ending note. <laughs> okay, well, cool. Nice to talk to you. I think we, I think that was pretty, pretty good conversation for. A yeah, I mean, for us meeting for the first time and like not having a brief, life. really. So. <laughs> cool. All cool. right. Спасибо большое. Bye. Bye. How do we how do we sign off here?